is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. You're about to see the Communist Party's complete disregard for human rights as they affect their plan of sabotage. burning up in the field, so what's left over costs more. Talk to your wholesaler about it. When? Just got word. Eight o'clock tonight, she'll be at my place. I'll be there. Good to be, it's urgent. Mister. I got your letters. meeting the fabulous comrade Martine. Set it up with Dressler so the FBI can get the information fast. That important woman I told you about, she's going to see me tonight. Well, with her involved, it's sure to be something urgent. We'll try for a personal contact in the morning, Herb. I'll meet you at, at that place. Goodbye. Shouldn't the others be joining us? There are no others. Just Comrade Martine and ourselves. She's late. She's worth waiting for. You won't forget her. I don't intend to. I've heard a great deal about you. Not about you. I'm sorry we haven't met before. It's part of my job to be on the move all the time. I contact no one unless I need their help. Well, I'll do what I can. And judging from past performance, that's quite a bit. You have an excellent party record, and you've risen to a good position in the advertising field. Thank you. You were recommended to me for an assignment of the greatest importance, but I insisted upon meeting you before accepting the recommendation. I hope you're not disappointed. I'm not. Please sit down. I prefer to stand. The United States is the single greatest obstacle in our struggle for world control, and therefore our most important target. To a large extent, the strength of the United States rests on its superiority in atomic weapons. But the Soviet Union will catch up. And not without our help. The imperialists are constantly perfecting better bombs. But the development program depends on experimentation and testing. Uh, the party now has a plan to delay any further testing of atomic weapons. Just how do we expect to do that? You'll learn in due course. All you need to know now is that you begin work tomorrow out of town. Okay. Where? Out of town. That should be enough for you to make plans. The rest you can leave to me. Good night and good luck. I'm waiting for a friend. Body movement, you better come along. Pleasure. 
ticket. Taking it to the railroad station. on the main street, two blocks away from the railroad station. Walk directly there, and someone will meet you. All passengers are aboard. You weren't sure Dreffler followed you where you fell, Brick. But you've still got a problem. When he sees you walk through this gate, you could be going to any one of seven cities. The train leaves in two minutes. Now, uh, how soon will I be back? <laughs> when you get through with your job. Uh-huh. I better get a timetable. May I have a timetable for Centerville, please? In front of the station patio. Please take your places now. Thank you. To avoid confusion in boarding the train. No visitors. May I have a timetable for Centerville, please? Please keep all luggage back at the white side of the station platform. what the country looks like living in the city. But the party doesn't forget. They'd like to see it all collectivized. And they're using you to help them do it. quite an experience for me. I must admit I don't know much about the rural aspects of the party. In true communism, the farm is as important as the factory. Oh. Have you always been a farmer? What makes you think I would? Well, I, uh, I just wondered how you got so well indoctrinated way out here. I was a party member in the city. I inherited this place from a stupid uncle, but I made it work. Ever since then, I've been waiting for the party to use me again. Hmm. A real sleeper, huh? Yeah, it's been eight years. They've been eight good years, mister. We've been happy. They could have left them alone. Now, Sally. Oh, don't shut me up. Why don't you go back where you came from? Why don't you let us lead our own lives? Sally, I've told you a thousand times I've got to fight for what I believe in. If you want to stay my wife, you'll stick by my side. You have to excuse her, comrade. So superior, aren't you? So superior. <laughs> She don't mean half what she says. Mm. Well, I'm ready to proceed with our project, comrade. Oh, sure, sure. Get right out here. You'd better be careful of Mrs. Owens. If she's really a deviationist, she can do something crazy and get you into trouble with the authorities. If she's a decoy, she can have only one purpose. That's to trap you. This here it was only an accident. That's what the party is doing with it. That's the great thing. Yeah, I'm listening. The party is placing the blame for this drought on the Atomic Energy Commission. The atom bomb test? That's right. People won't believe it. It's easier than you think, comrade. People are afraid of what they don't understand. Atomic weapons is one thing they're plenty afraid of. Some of them think we're going to blow up the whole world. Others, we're going to make the seas explode. The people around here, they think the big explosions have changed the weather. But scientific evidence indicates that there's been very minor weather change. You try telling that to folks who saw their first flood in 20 years last winter. And the longest dry spell they can remember this summer. But it's easy to tell them something else. That's just what I've been doing. You've been conducting this whispering campaign all by yourself? It's more than just a whispering campaign. Come on. 
Now you're beginning to find things out, Philbrick. It shouldn't surprise you it's an old trick, taking the fears of people and turning them in the direction the party wants. I got these scattered throughout the whole county. And we, the undersigned, in full knowledge of the seriousness of our request, do petition that there be no further atomic weapon tests until a thorough study is made of their effect on climatic conditions. How many signatures you got? Mm, practically every farm family in the county. Good work. Yeah, but the important work is tonight. That's why you were sent down here, comrade. You're going to write me a speech. You're going to give me the details on how to make this farm committee pass a resolution that'll make our congressmen sit up and take notice. Seems to me like you've been doing pretty well on your own. Ah, I'm only a farmer. You're a professional advertising man. Well, I think you got a pretty sure thing here. Yeah, but we can't take a chance on letting democracy get out of hand. Let's go. Well, if, uh, if you'll get me a room at the hotel, I'll... Hey, you can work right here. Oh, no, no, I couldn't do that. I, uh, I'll need a typewriter. Sure, we knew that. No, I got this one specially for you. Does he have to work here? Does he have to do his dirty work right here in my kitchen? Shut up. I won't. I'll go to the papers. Shut I'll... up. Now get out of here. Comrade, under the circumstances, I'm sure it'd be better if I checked into the hotel. You're going to stay right here, comrade. to our farmland. They don't care if it becomes a desert. All they want is bigger and better bombs. But we got to make a living off our land. So we ask them not to set off any more bombs until they find out if it'll ruin our land and our climate. Sure, just a small delay. Then another and another. That's how the party will work it. That's playing the game, but with a stacked deck. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. I will be, if everything goes as I expect it to. Don't think you're getting away with it. Mrs. Owens, if you persist in this attitude, you're going to make things very uncomfortable for your husband. He hasn't worried about making me uncomfortable. This community's treated us pretty good this last eight years. Well, it interests me to hear you say that. Oh? Just what do you mean by that? I think you'll find out very soon. which is not well, it's an unexpected pleasure to see you here. I took Roscoe's car and drove up. I couldn't miss the big night in Centerville. Hello, Miss Fenton. You've got to gamble. If you tell Comrade Martine about Mrs. Owens and she's been honest, you're putting her in physical jeopardy. But if she's been testing your security and you say nothing, you're a dead pigeon. How's it going? I don't think we should discuss it in front of Mrs. Owens. Why not? Because she hates us and she hates the party. Her very presence here is a threat to every one of us. Perhaps you're right, comrade. They're about to start voting. I'll listen here at the door. Now, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, no. No. Well, the ayes have it. If our plans work out as well through the whole country as they have here, we can count ourselves successful already. I don't think we should discuss this any further. If Comrade Philbrick is referring to my wife... I am. You know my wife has no security risk. You've said quite enough. Yes, Comrade. Now, please leave Comrade Philbrick and me alone. Chalk one up, Philbrick. You better hope Comrade Martine is impressed enough to do some more talking about her plans. I must say, comrade, I've been gratified with your attitude and your work. Well, I feel that this whole project of yours has a tremendous potential. Exactly. If we can cause enough confused thinking to delay atomic tests for even one month, we will be doing an incalculable amount of good. I don't quite see, though, how you're going to put this on a national scale. There aren't enough droughts to go around. Oh, no, not droughts, but there are other things. In the Northwest, radioactive rains ruining fruit. 
We exploit all of these things, just as we've done here. And I imagine you'll make certain that some of these fears are justified. Oh, we hope to. Of course, we can't cause floods, but fish and fruit can be discreetly poisoned in the right time at the right places. Oh, Comrade Philbrick, tomorrow I should like to get your opinion on that section of the master plan dealing with this area. Well, I could just as well study it tonight. No, it's with the rest of the material in the city and safe. That's the cigarette case you saw in Comrade Roscoe's apartment, Philbrick. I see I made an error in mentioning the safe and offering you a cigarette at the same time. An error? The case was on the mantel. That's where the plans have to be. In the safe behind the picture over the mantel. Come on, take a chance, Philbrick. I do know about Comrade Roscoe's wall safe. No harm done. I was careless. We'll be getting an early start. Good night. Good night. You might have known all along that Roscoe was working with her, but you should have controlled your reaction. Now, if those plans are tampered with, you're the number one suspect. Of course, you realize your work here isn't over. It's just beginning. I understand. You'll organize a letter-writing campaign to your congressman and senator to follow up the delivery on the resolution voted last night. I've already done that. And you'll form a permanent committee to bring constant pressure to have the bomb test discontinued. Oh, and you'll make a point also of the anti-communistic nature of the committee. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yes. Watch your wife, comrade. Yes, comrade. On a farm in Centerville, wrapped up tight, comrade Roy Owens and wife working to cripple atomic weapon development. There are other Roy Owens throughout the country now, Philbrick. You've got to make sure the FBI finds out who and where. And all that information is in comrade Martin's master plan. Get to a phone. It's a long time between stops and telephones. You've got a friend, Philbrick, Special Agent Dressler. But he can't have those plans photographed unless he knows about them. You've got to get to a phone and call the FBI. be there in another hour. I've got to make a phone call. A call? To whom? Well, to my office, to see if there's anything that demands my immediate attention. You caught me at a rather busy time. You might have known she wouldn't let you get away with it. She knows your office phone number. All right. Call your office. The operator. Give me state, 6321. Hello, Carol. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Mr. Philbrick. Anything that needs my immediate attention? Oh? Oh, just a second till I get a pencil and paper. What was that address again? Okay. I've got it. Right. Thank you. We'll have no 
business with the party. Yeah, soon, I hope. Well, I have to make a call myself. Oh, I haven't any change. Gosh, I'm, I'm sorry. I used all mine on my call. Oh, well, never mind. Let's see it. I'll make my call later. because Comrade Martine knows you were aware of the contents of that safe. How did it go? Extremely well. Uh, how long have you been here, Comrade? What business is it of yours? Well, uh, the market's usually open later than this. Usually, but it didn't pay me to stay open today. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll give me the material for this area, I can go over it right away. I intended that you should. Someone's opened the safe. Well, you must be mistaken, comrade. I'm not mistaken. I took advantage of the sloppy way in which you hang pictures, comrade Roscoe. I drew a line on the wall to show the exact angle at which the picture was hung. It's been changed. That's something you didn't figure on, Philbrick. Never underestimate a communist. But maybe you're learning that lesson a little too late. You were told not to open the safe while it contained the material. But I didn't, comrade. When we stopped today, whom did you call? Oh, my office. You, you heard me. I thought I did. It's easy to check. You made a note, did you not? Yes. Just what did the note contain? Well, uh, look, I resent having my honesty doubted like this. Why resent it? You should stand ready to face security tests at any time. The note, please. I went into the safe, comrade. You were told not to. I needed cash, a debt, but I didn't touch your material. You will be severely rebuked for your breach of security. Here, hold this. Yes, comrade. Here are the plans for this area. People who will start whispering campaigns, plant newspaper articles, it's all there. Oh, fine, comrade. And, uh, the national plan? They'll remain with me. Uh-huh. Well, it's been very nice working with you. Thank you. We shall do so again. What happened, Philbrick? Did you fail? Are those national plans still a secret?
possessing the communist master plan, the FBI warned local authorities and destroyed the effect of the party's propaganda. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, the kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Thank you.